Hello and welcome back to Investing for Generations, your channel for high quality stock research for long term value investor. And today I want to analyze another company and uh, it's a quite a while ago since I analyzed the whole company in a video and the motivation to that came from Dmitry Bulatov, uh, one of my subscribers and he leave a comment on my latest Pfizer video and said, what do you think about Fresenius and FMC? This is not a similar situation as Pfizer. I just promised to take a deeper look and I did. And it's really, really interesting what I found here. And so I want to analyze Fresenius here in this video. And I will go through the financial numbers and also the potential uh, which this company have and then I also come to a conclusion if it's maybe a good time to buy uh, Fresenius and why I will buy a first position on Monday. So let's start. Fresenius is a German company in the medical sector and a very big company almost 23 billion of uh, market capitalization um, but lately over the last month or so um, the stock price declined to 35 euro right now with as i said a market capitalization of almost 23 billion a very low p ratio of 10 and a forward dividend yield of 2.4 and the reason for the latest decline is that, that Fresenius Medical plunges as dialysis pa patients hit by the pandemic. Fresenius Medical Care Fresenius Medical Care fell the most in more than two years after the kidney dialysis company said profit will shrink this year as more patients die from COVID-19. And so, of course, this is sad, first of all, uh, all this pandemic situation and, of course, also the people with already disease like the kidney patients a big drama and hopefully uh, this whole pandemic will end very very soon but the dialysis sector and Fresenius medical care is just one part of the big and strong portfolio of Fresenius they also have Fresenius Kabi which um, offers hospital supplies Fresenius Helios, which offer the hospital operation, and Fresenius Vamit. Here overall, we have this Fresenius uh, family conglomerate, and Fresenius Medical Care, of course, is the biggest part of that. And so, of course, with the problems with the dialysis uh, right now in the pandemic situation, also Fresenius suffers overall, and so the stock price. And Fresenius Medical Care, for example, the biggest part of the whole Fresenius is the global dial dialysis market leader with around 350,000 patients in 4,000 clinics. And this whole dialysis market is a big market around 80 billion um, and with a growth of around 6% per year. So. Overall, Fresenius is a global leader in healthcare products and services with revenues of 35 billion with a leading market position. And most of their revenue overall come from North America and Europe, um, but also in the other parts of the world. Um, they offer their services and so overall they really have a great, great market position. And that's what we also can see here. When we look at these uh, dark blue scale, then we see that the revenue just grew over the last 15 years. Um, this is very, very nice. And with that, also their earnings per share grow over time. And so the revenue over the last five years grew 8.8% uh, per year. And their earnings per share in the last five years grew 11%. So that's very, very good. Very, very stable. Um, a dream for every long-term value investor. And overall, Fresenius work on very stable, but not very high margins. The net margin is around 5%, um, sometimes a little bit under, sometimes a little bit higher, but between 5 and 6%. This is stable, but as I said, not very sexy, not very high, but good. For me, that's fine. 
and they make money all the time. And also when we look at the balance sheet, the debt equity ratio, um, it's 0 0.68. This is not very good, but it's fine, it's stable. This is not a big issue. And of course, also in the future, there are growth opportunities for Fresenius. When we look at the global trends, um, the people will get older, they will need more healthcare, there will be a higher rate of chronic ill patients, and so overall this whole medical sector will grow over time. And so also there are a lot of opportunities to grow the business for Fresenius in the future. And also here we have the growth areas for every sector of Fresenius and uh, this makes absolutely sense for me and I think Fresenius have a good position to move on from here. And so the growth targets over the next few years are um, in the organic, organic sales growth between 4 and 7% and the organic net income growth between 5 and 9%. Um, and this, as I said before, is not a lot. Of course, this is not a growth stock like so many other tech stocks with high growth, uh, growth rates, but um, very, very stable over time. And I really like that. And so overall, we can say we have a very, very good, a very profitable, very stable business with also very good growth perspective in the future. And the question is, is it time to buy uh, Fresenius after the last decline. Therefore, of course, as always, I try to calculate the intrinsic value and therefore I use for, since a few months Excel sheet of Sven Karlin. If you don't know him, he is for me the best YouTuber in the financial sector. Um, I will put a link to his YouTube channel here down in the description and there I also put a link uh, where you can download uh, this Excel sheet to calculate the intrinsic value. And first of all, to calculate the intrinsic value, I take the earnings per share of three, three euro 20. Uh, this is the expected earnings per share for 2020. And the other thing we need is the growth rate. And so, and then we calculate normal case scenario, best case scenario, and the worst case scenario. Um, for the normal case scenario, I just put a growth rate of 6% for the next five years. Remember the target is between five and nine. And so six uh, seems fair. And so I put 6% and for the years six to 10, 4%. Then we need the discount rate and the discount rate is just my expected return, my return I expect from my investments. And this is normally 12%. This can change, everybody is different. And of course, with the low interest rates uh, on your bank account or even negative interest rates on your bank account and the very low interest rate on the bonds. Uh, maybe you're also happy with 5, 6 or 8%, whatever. Uh, for me, it's 12%. The terminal multiply, um, I just looked into, into the past and in the past, uh, Fresenius was between 10 and 20 in the PE ratio. And so I put here the 15, this looks also fair. And when we calculate that, when we come to the intrinsic value of 47 euro, which is way higher than the current price of 35. And when we calculate the best case scenario, then of course the growth rates go to the upper limit of the targets. Um, so I put nine and 6% and the terminal multiply of 20, which is also the higher range in the past. And then I come to an intrinsic value of 66 euro and then also calculate the worst case scenario. And in the worst case scenario, I put 3% for the next five years, also 3% for the years six to 10, uh, with a terminal multiply of 10, which is a lower range of their historic PE ratio. And then I come to 34 euro, which is almost the current stock price. So it seems like the market calculate a worst case scenario. And I think this is unlikely because uh, of course we have this covered problems and Fresenius medical care suffer from that and suffer a lot from that, but this is just temporary. And over the long term, um, Fresenius medical care will recover from that as the whole world and also the whole company of Fresenius will just move on and grow 
um, I think at least the chances for that are very high. It's very, very likely uh, that this company uh, will grow more than 3% per year. And so overall, when we calculate these scenarios and the probabilities of 60% for the normal case scenario and 20 for the best and worst case, then we come to an intrinsic value of 48 euro. And this is way over the current stock price of 35. We can say Fresenius right now seems quite undervalued. And so this seems very, very interesting. And also on top, they raise their dividend uh, for 27 consecutive years, a uh, CAGR of dividend increase of 15%. This is also impressive. So overall, I have to say that Fresenius is boring but sexy, and I love it. This is the kind of company I really like. As a long-term value investor, I will buy a first position uh, next week uh, just to have also skin in the game, and I think I will build over time quite a bigger position in this great company. I really like it. And so I have to say thank you to Dimitri. This was really, really worth to look at it. It seems like it's overlooked. It's overlooked by the market. And it was also overlooked by me. Really, really thank you, Dimitri. And also to all the other people who watch my videos, give me ideas in the comment section. First of all, of course, what you think about Fresenius here on that video but also if you have any other company you want a deeper analysis from me um, just put it down in the comment section and then i will look at the companies and if i find something really interesting like here then of course i also will make a video that's it for today thanks for watching if you find it interesting and found any value in this video, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell to never miss another video and give me a big thumbs up. This helps my motivation and the YouTube algorithm as well. And then we will see you the next time with another video about another stock. See you then. Take care. Bye bye.